Hi and welcome to Scottish Set Text Revision with Miss Thompson. Tonight we're going to be looking at Carol Ann Duffy exam technique and practice for four and two mark questions. So our learning intentions for this session are to understand how to answer language questions in paper two, to understand how to answer effective conclusion questions in paper two, and to develop our knowledge of four and two mark questions in paper two. Your paper two exam will last for an hour and a half, which gives you 45 minutes per section. You want to leave a decent amount of time to be able to write your full essay for your critical reading. So although you shouldn't rush your Duffy, you want to make sure you've got plenty of time for your essay as well. There are 40 marks available in total for this part of the exam, 20 marks for Scottish set text and 20 marks for critical reading essay. Your Scottish set text section will contain about four or five questions, which will include your eight mark question. And you'll only have one of the poems in front of you in the exam paper. This means that you need to learn at least one or two other poems in detail with some quotes so that you can reference them in your eight mark question. For the Scottish set text, you've got 12 marks made up of four and two mark questions on the extract alone. So that is the poem that you have in front of you. Then you have your eight mark question, which you'll answer on both the poem in front of you and the other poems that you know. You should use the quote technique analysis three part structure to help you answer your questions and make sure you are given sufficient detail. Although the eight mark question has its own structure, you can still use quote technique analysis within this as well. We will be tackling the eight mark question another night, but for tonight, we're going to be looking at four and two mark questions. This is what your exam paper will probably look like. You're going to have a few questions and you'll have your one poem in front of you. For the sake of this evening, I've picked Originally by Carol Ann Duffy, which you should know well by now. This is not the paper that we'll be tackling tonight. However, this is on the SQA website and I believe it is the 2016 paper. So if you'd like to give that a try, you can go there and give it a go for exam practice. So first of all, language questions. You'll be familiar with these from RUEE, so you should know how to answer them, but if you've forgotten, that's okay. It asks you to look at the poet's use of word choice, imagery, sentence structure, or tone. Word choice questions are usually a good straightforward one to go for because it does exactly what it says on the tin. You choose a word and explain three connotations and how this links to the question. Then your imagery questions, will ask you to look at techniques such as simile, metaphor or personification. You should really be using your just as so to structure, but if you simply can't get your head around that, then you can use bullet points and explain just both sides of the comparison that's been made. As long as you're very clear about both sides of the comparison, because that's what the SQA are looking to see from you. In sentence structure and tone, you should use quote technique analysis for both. And there are a list of sentence structures and a list of tones up on Google Classroom for you to look at. So the first question that we'll be looking at this evening is part of the past paper that we'll be going through together is a four mark language question. So Look at lines one to eight by referring to two examples of language, explain how the poet makes it clear that the children are unhappy about leaving home. Now might be a good time if you are playing along at home to pause the video and give this a try with your poem in front of you. Okay, so if it was me that's in the exam and I got this question, I'd first of all check what lines I need to be quoting from. It says here, look at lines one to eight. So I know that that is the first stanza. It then says, refer to two examples of language. So I know that means word choice, imagery, sentence structure or tone. 
it says that it's worth four marks. So I know that because you do get marks for your quote sitting at five, that means that at minimum I need to give two examples here. Ideally, you want to be given an insurance answer, meaning an additional answer, just in case your answer isn't detailed enough, just to cover your back. It also says here that I need to make sure this use of language shows how the children are unhappy about leaving home. This is a very common mistake with pupils. You see that it's a use of language question and you pick out any instance of word choice or any instance of sentence structure and you don't link it to the question. So make sure you've read the question thoroughly because it's so gutting if you went through all the right steps for a language question, but it just doesn't pertain to the question. So question one. Look at lines one to eight, refer to two examples of language and explain how the poet makes it clear that the children are unhappy about leaving home and it's worth four marks. You've got two candidates here. You can pause the video and give each of these candidates a mark out of four. So candidate one and candidate two. Candidate one has said, bawling suggests that the brother is very upset, crying hysterically and being particularly emotional. This shows how unhappy he is about moving to England. Holding its paw suggests that the speaker is scared and clinging to the familiar toy for comfort. This shows their apprehension about leaving home. Candidate two has said singing our father's name suggests they miss the dad and are scared to leave home. All childhood is an emigration suggests that they are moving on from the place they love and feel nervous about it. So give each candidate a mark out of four and then we'll see what I would have given each candidate as well. Okay, so for candidate one, I would have awarded them four marks. Here's why. Candidate one has given the word choice of bawling. This suggests that the brother is very upset, crying hysterically and being particularly emotional. So they've given a good detailed explanation about the connotations and how this relates to the question. So one mark for bawling, one mark for their explanation. Holding its paw, suggests that the speaker's scared and clinging to the familiar toy for comfort. So they would get a mark for this quote because it absolutely answers the question and then a mark for their explanation here as well. Candidate two, however, I'm afraid has not done so well. Singing our father's name, whilst it's an interesting quote, isn't actually said by the children. If we read the poem thoroughly, we can see it's said by the mother and the question quite clearly states here that it needs to be about the children being unhappy. So they've not read the question thoroughly. Although you do get marks for your quotes at Nat 5, it has to be relevant to the question. All childhood is, is an emigration. Again, great quote, but it doesn't really relate to the question and it's also been taken from the wrong place. So for that reason, they would have been awarded no marks despite using the right kind of structure for their answer and despite quoting, because their quotes just are not relevant, I'm afraid. So question two, same again, we're gonna look at some model answers and decide how much each candidate would achieve in the exam. Look at lines nine to 16, so we're on stanza two now, by referring to two examples of language, show how the poet makes clear the effects of moving home. This question's worth four marks, so we're going to just repeat the same process as we did for question one. So, candidate one, my parents' anxiety stirred like a loose tooth is a metaphor about moving home. Your accent wrong suggests she's white. Candidate two has said, my parents' anxiety stirred like a loose tooth is a simile. Just as a loose tooth is painful, annoying and niggles at you, so too are her parents' worries agonising. Both the parents and the speaker are anxious about their new home. 
your accent wrong suggests she doesn't fit in and is an outsider due to her voice being different. This highlights the speaker's discomfort at moving to a new place. So give each candidate a mark out of four here, remembering that you do get marks for the quotes. So for candidate one, they didn't do quite so well, but I still would have awarded them two marks. I would have awarded them a mark for their first quote because it does answer the question. However, their explanation is not detailed enough and they've also identified the wrong technique as this is a simile. We can see it's a simile because it uses the word like. Their quote, your accent wrong, whilst is a good quote, doesn't again have a detailed explanation as to how it answers the question. For that reason, they would have still achieved a mark for the quote, but not the explanation part of their answer. So I would have given them two marks out of the available four. Candidate two would have achieved full four out of four marks. So they did really well with this question. They would have achieved the mark for the quote, and they've done a really good job of using the just as so to structure to explain this comparison and to explain both sides of it thoroughly. They would then have achieved another mark for the quote your accent wrong for word choice and they would have received a further mark for their detailed explanation of this quote. So how many marks did you award these candidates? Does it square with my marks or did you give them something a bit different? Question three. Look at lines 17 to 24. By referring to one example of language, show how the speaker begins to accept their new life. So it's a bit different now. It's worth two marks, so it's slightly less than your four mark questions, but you're still going to be using that same structure quote technique analysis. We can still see that it's a use of language question, so we're still going to have to use WIST here. So candidate one is looking like the more detailed of the two. My tongue shedding its skin like a snake is a simile, just as a shake sheds its skin, so too is the speaker's accent changing and evolving. Snakes are also associated with deception, which suggests her tongue is tricking her into using a new accent. You could also have talked about sibilance there, so the repetition of the F sound. A scalp of shame is a metaphor, just as a scalp is tiny, so too is her self sense of shame about her identity lessened. This is also a Scots word tying back to her old country. And then Canada too has said, my tongue shedding its skin like a snake is a simile. So give each of these candidates a mark out of two this time. So for candidate one, I would have given them two out of two marks. So they would have achieved full marks for this answer. And what I liked about their answer is that they gave an insurance answer as well. They gave a backup. They would have achieved full two out of two marks for either of the options that they gave their marker. For candidate two, however, they would only have achieved one mark, I'm afraid, because they have not given a detailed explanation for their quote. So on to our final question of this video, we're going to be looking at lines 18 to 23 and by referring to the poetry of language, evaluate the effectiveness of these lines as a conclusion to the poem. This is worth two marks, as we can see. So we're only going to need one example, but we might want to give an extra answer as an insurance. It's asking us to look at the poetry of language, which we know is word choice, imagery, sentence structure or tone. However, it's also asking us to evaluate the effectiveness of these lines as a conclusion to the poem. So candidate one has said the word choice of originally reintroduces an important theme of identity. This is an effective conclusion because it brings us back to the idea of where you come from or the discussion of where you come from. Candidate two has said this is an effective conclusion because it ties together all the main ideas in the poem and makes the reader think. So how many marks out of two would you award these candidates?
remembering that you do get your marks for your quotes at Nat 5. Okay, so for candidate 1, I would have awarded them one mark for their quote originally. That is a nice easy quote for you to pick out because it's just one word. The word choice of originally reintroduces an earlier idea of identity. So, for effective conclusion questions, you want to think about how it reiterates something that we've heard before in the poem. They could also have mentioned that it ties in with the title itself and creates a kind of cyclical um, idea to the poem or feeling to the poem. They get their second mark from their pretty detailed explanation there, so they would have got full marks. Candidate two, however, you will make your English teacher very sad if you do this. They've said it's an effective conclusion because it ties together the main points and makes the reader think. This is absolutely what not to do. They've not quoted despite it being a language question and they've not really said anything here. They've not gone into really any detail at all. So candidate two would have achieved no marks whatsoever. For your effective conclusion questions, as with Rui, you want to be thinking about how do the techniques used engage the reader or create an interesting conclusion or indeed reiterate an idea or technique that has been used previously. So finally, we'll return to our learning intentions. On a scale of one to three, one being that you're still struggling and three being that you're very confident and pretty ready to move on, how do you feel about language questions? Then same again for conclusion questions. And then finally, four and two mark questions. If you're still needing further practice, I would recommend doing some past papers from the SQA website or getting in touch with your teacher. If you're feeling confident, then you might want to move on and start thinking about your eight mark question, which we'll be posting a video about very soon. Thank you for all your hard work and good luck for your exam.